We're, we're getting started because uh, Justin sent over the Twitch party. He sent over the, the raid. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to start weird things here in just a little bit. We're waiting for Ryan to show up, waiting for Justin to uh, get turned over for, uh, uh, for, for the next thing. Hope everyone had a good weekend. I'm trying to think what I did this weekend. It's a cleaning. It's a late spring cleaning over the weekend. Um, my apartment has a, uh, has like a little bar area. It's like a little count countertop bar thing that was just full of papers and old tech and, and business cards, coins, just all sorts of stuff. It just threw all that, all that stuff away. Just throw all that stuff away. Um, and now it's nice. Now it's clean. Now I've got open space. I'm never going to use it for a bar because it's like right in front of the front door, which is such a bad place for it. But I got space now. I could decorate. I could put an indoor plant there or something. Right? So, uh, uh, so that's good. But now, now I need, I really need to work on the bedroom. Um, uh, my, my, <laughs> my living room is always like kind of nice looking enough because like i would entertain people um but uh the bedroom is always very like just throw extra stuff so i got like boxes and luggage i got coats everywhere um i have a pile of socks at one point i got rid of a lot of my socks and then just bought a new thing of socks and put them in my drawer but then i didn't get rid of the old socks or all of the old socks and so they're in a pile my, my dude on a Sort of the, the bedroom I was like if you made it this far <laughs> you know my my pile of t-shirts on the floor is not going to turn you away <laughs> i was single for 10 years unrelated <laughs> uh but i just i've never i'm like my bedroom is like unadorned it doesn't have much of anything so i need to i think that's the next thing i need to clean up and and make make look pretty and all so seems fine okay okay everybody this is brian brushwood joining us hey Just look at minute. that um but yeah i don't know uh gotta i gotta gotta figure out gotta clean up gotta clean i gotta clean up the bedroom I gotta that's a uh, is that is that is that an action item just uh it, it's at, now that i'm like at home a lot um and you know not not going out as much like i i i think it's the next thing to do it's it is the next thing to do um uh i know for me like my the state of the shit around me is very much an out a reflection of where my focus is internally like if i if my mm -hmm. office is kind of like put together i feel more focused than i than i would otherwise and you know same with like i forget who told me this but like somebody once was like oh you know the the key to like having a good day and this is like in college is like making your bed every morning Mm. like that that's that been, there's just like yeah 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 that's been like kind of organizational advice even like jordan peterson talks about that too was the idea that like and that was like i think some like military it's like a military thing too if you make your bed in the morning you yeah. just sort of sets everything else up so my girlfriend makes the bed every morning and i feel like i'm <laughs> you know, and you're like this is great <laughs> uh um i guess that that's interesting because i guess that might that maybe that is a little sub subconscious because i would just i just like got some little i got a little uh outdoor table and a little like sprays and stuff for my patio because i'm spending more time out there or my little balcony thing 
Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. That's, um, you know, for, for me, I think it certainly was always a help. And also it's like, it's one of those things that I think is a persistent reminder of this seems stupid, but a committing to do it, it like builds a habit and, uh, it's, it's, uh, just a, like the benefit of when you come back to your room and you see the bed made is like, mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. Like you feel like it is like this very regular delayed gratification of like, Oh, I did a thing that I thought was stupid in the morning. And I was very happy when I found it later, but at night. Mm-hmm. There is, there is a really, really hard high correlation between habits like that and success. And it's one of these things like, and not to say that if you're if you're chaotic, you won't be successful. Sometimes you're just moving too fast to be able to do things. But like, you know, when you look at, you know, when I was a kid, you need to go to other people's homes, the houses that were a mess, those families were a mess. You know, they were always going from in debt or going from problem to problem. The ones that were more organized, maybe they might hit a downturn. The dad might lose his job. But then think quickly things got back on track. And I think if those little, it's like we talk about those little patterns and form the larger ones, yeah. like saving $10 a month. Even when you're broke, if every month your instinct is, I got to put some money away, even if it's five bucks or 10 bucks. And that's the same, same thing with like keeping things organized, you know, making sure, you know, my thing was always like, I'm going to live in a state of chaos, but I'm never going to go to sleep with 30 dishes in the sink. You know, like I'm going to take out my garbage every day. That was sort of my thing. Cause like I've always lived in places too small for me. Cause like, you know, Andrew is like as a very I have a very li- li- was below my means as possible kind of thing. But you know, like that, yeah, the make your bed thing is great advice. I don't do it, but <laughs> hey, Brian, are we talking about making beds? Are we are we, are we yeah. passing judgment? Well, we're talking about cleaning cleaning up. And, and I, I I was saying I need to clean up my bedroom and maybe maybe make it nice and pretty in there. Uh, so the one of my favorite moments from Star War or Star uh, uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse is when somebody points out to Miles Morales, uh, "Your shoes are untied," and just like like he, he's heard it a million times, he says, "It's a choice," <laughs> and then keeps <laughs> walking. <laughs> that's that's how yeah. I feel about <sighs> making beds. <laughs> well, it, it, the, the the starting point was sort of the deeper thing is that like if you're in a state of like you're not feeling like you're getting things done and you're disorganized taking control of little things like, like, you know, like, 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 I don't make my bed in the morning. Cause I don't like, I feel like I get stuff done, but I know that in places in my life where I felt disorganized, small instances of order, you know, all of a sudden reflects in the rest of your life. Then you're like, you know what? I'll clean my place up. Like, you know what? I'm going to go through my paperwork. And then all of a sudden it can have that effect of putting you in a mind of saying, instead of eh, F it, I don't care to, no, I care about little details. Cause Life is about little details. Well, and and uh, the way I think about it is, um, uh, man, weirdly enough, basketball. Like uh, uh, the only times I've ever felt good about me playing basketball have involved an hour of me practicing directly underneath the hoop, just just seeing myself being able to get the ball through the hoop uh, and then and then backing away far enough, uh, you know, you and then getting your confidence up and all of that stuff. I would imagine it's that same kind of thing. Like if you want to go to bed feeling like you had a kick ass day, then, you know, d- do the baby steps, uh, you, you know, win, win at a bunch of trivial, tiny things so that by the end of the day, you uh you you feel the confidence to try on you know the hard things and then and they could go to bed feeling like you kicked kicked a lot of ass yeah and that, absolutely because like i think a lot of a lot of the frustration you see in people is we feel powerless and if you can't exert power or organization with your own home you're not going to really feel powerful in your the rest of your life you're not if you if your own apartment or house is in a state of chaos yeah what's your work environment going to be what's every, what what's going to be everything outside of there and i think that once you start to see like oh no i can have order habits and discipline and then it can extend outwards so like i yeah i i, I like i totally get and i you know i get the value of it but like, i don't do it but you know, <laughs> i can get it well and and also there's uh uh weirdly <laughs> this is this is the dumbest this is how privileged uh, uh, uh our lives are is like 
that's how I am when it comes to watching the TV shows that I have to watch for cord killers. It's like, hey, man, you don't have to watch them all at once, but let's just get one Larry Sanders out of the way. Oh, look at that. Good on you. You did a Larry Sanders. Can you do one more? You did. All right. Now let's watch Warrior Nun. Oh, look at that. You're doing it. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's some guy 100 miles away in a field with a shovel trying to dig an irrigation ditch. I know, I He's know, like, I know. man, I, 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 I hope I get like, extra money to buy some better, you know, uh, suntan lotion because I'm afraid that I'm going to get cancer. <laughs> Look, I, I'm not the hero in this st story. <laughs> None of us are. None of us are. I know. I'm just saying, like, yeah, that's, I think about, like, I'm like, I got to do edits on my book. Like, oh, you got to sit down for six hours and go through, you know, a couple line edits on a book and get paid a stupid amount of money, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. you got to sit there and think about your imaginary friends and how they'll deal with the made-up situation that you're thinking for They're them. <laughs> a phrase that I heard that changed my life. And again, like, I think we've all, like, I mean, I hung drywall in the summer. I've done, I think we've all done stuff like that, but then you kind of move past it. But a phrase I heard that never, that I never thought about, but then I'm like, oh, yeah, somebody said, like, yeah, you know, uh, you know, she goes like, I'm like, ah, oh, my boyfriend wants to get an indoor job. I'm like, oh, an indoor job, like, oh, oh she yeah. said indoor, <laughs> like, yeah, like inside, like that's like, yeah, like yeah, because what's yeah, funny is be... I'm immediately thinking like building traps for the empire, <laughs> like <laughs> that's what I thought an indoor job was. <laughs> no, 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 right, right, that could be that too, but no, the idea of like working indoors, like, like, yeah, I. I I want to have it like you're like oh yeah no yeah how, how would it be outside a lot can suck yeah <laughs> the, the 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 two early examples i had with my stepdad ron he ran his own business which i always was thankful that somebody in my life uh, uh was running their own business so i could see what that looked like and what it didn't look like also it was cleaning carpets which made me never want to work cleaning carpets ever again <laughs> like because it is a vile vile profession and i was like no nah, you know let's really work double hard on that like getting paid to write words thing like that seems like <laughs> like action adventure excitement and then it ends with you writing words and not smelling cat pee yeah it's funny thing. it was like look at look at your fellow uh graduates though from journalism school um probably the carpet cleaners are making more money right now brother it's a good time uh, to be yeah. in a trade that's for sure yep yeah good time to oh, have a totally. real skill yeah oh yeah you know we used to laugh at those kids oh the vocational kid school learning how to weld oh, things no. and build stuff you meanwhile know? <laughs> they're crushing <laughs> like, it at 80 dollars an hour oh and working God, yeah. as no, much or as little as they want i mean my, yeah. My, yeah my my point is more that i'm a soft ass dilettante yeah that had to go to fancy boy <laughs> writing school <laughs> and also also uh, uh very little gambling when you're in plumbing or house cleaning like uh it's there's very little chance that you will do all of the effort and then be told uh you know what we're going in a different direction <laughs> yeah. like, very rarely do you clean a house on spec <laughs> yeah that's usually uh straight cash homie <laughs> Already, you guys ready to do uh, do a podcast? Hells, yep. yeah, dude! Right. Stoked, go. stoked for another week. All right, here we go, Andrew. Not today, death. I'm gonna count you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, Brian Brushwood. Is it happening yet? Have I reached uh, Sawyer levels of long hairness? I just need the dimples, I think. There. Yeah, I'm working on it. Well, Mr. Bryce Castillo, what do you think? Uh, uh I don't know. I, I mean, it's getting longer, but I don't know. You still look like Shaggy to me. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I, at least I've learned not to wear green shirts. <laughs> very, very interesting to see uh, uh, where the uh, comparisons of Brian's haircut are from Bryce and from Brian. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Brian's like, so what? Yeah, do you think I have the hair of the studly heartthrob? Like, do I have studly heartthrob <laughs> hair? It's like, oh no, you look like Shaggy. You know, <laughs> the cartoon stoner. He solved mysteries. Yeah. He did. I, he ate I a lot like of sandwiches, like, though. 
I feel like I look like meth buyer number four from Breaking Bad right now. <laughs> hey, yeah. man, uh, you're talking to meth buyer number one and number two from... Uh, no, parolee. Parolee, parolee number parolee. one and, and parolee number two uh, from the upcoming film released this Friday, Tijuana Jackson, Purpose Over Prison. We're in the credits. Uh, uh, it is uh, uh, It is officially there. People have seen the movie, I guess, in different regions. It's been released already. Uh, but uh, very, very excited to support our buddy Romney. The trailer looked great. I, I didn't know. I knew you guys did a while ago, and I saw this trailer on Apple movie trailers, whatever. I'm like, wait, and I click and I watch it. I'm like, I know what this is, and I'm going back to a couple scenes. Like, are they? No, nope, no, okay, but still, but it looked really good. I'm excited to see this. Yeah, we, like, like we are definitely in a blink and you'll miss it moment in the movie. But uh, according to, to Romney, <laughs> it's 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 definitely a scene that's stuck in there. And uh, uh, man, that Red Band's uh, trailer really sings. Like, like it looks it looks really funny. Yeah, that one's really good. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so okay, yeah, that's off to him. I'm that's sure. A, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll, we'll 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 plug it with things. But uh, but yeah, parolee number one and parolee number two at your service. Which, <laughs> which one got top billing? Which one got number one? Oh no no no! Justin was the star of that. I mean, like like I mean, like like I was. I, I mean, my my job was to be just tweaking the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gentlemen, I want to talk about something completely different now. There's been a a big hot startup space has been getting more into neuroscience. We've talked before about uh, Neuralink, which is one of the companies that Elon Musk started, which was you know, designed to sort of build brain interfaces, sort of the neural lace from uh, like the Peter F. Hamilton books, and the idea of uh, you know this interface between you know your brain and computers. He recently talked about the idea that you'd be able to use it to play music directly into your head. There's another, which we can talk about that, but there's another company, Kernel, which is, uh, I think they had a new round of financing, but they're another one of these stealthy startups and their goal is to develop another kind of, they're working on some non-invasive ways to sort of monitor brain activity. And they're kind of a little bit evasive about what they're working on, but very interesting. They've got some funding from some pretty big funders, uh, Coastal Ventures, General Catalyst, et cetera, and on-demand access to our world-leading brain technology. So, so they're like, uh, like, like, like what, what would this mean? Um, <clears throat> sort of, uh, uh, you put on a hat and you, and you, uh, set the dial to productive for the day. And then you, uh, you, you get out and for in, in a million vague little ways, you feel nudged to get more done or. Well, they're not, that's not what they're putting right now. Most everybody's just talking about right now, either monitoring, seeing what goes inside of the brain to try to get that more closely. Neuralink has talked a bit about people with with like severe like motor disorders and other conditions and stuff to try to use it as a treatment for that. Um, this is sort of more like uh, basically just their colonels talk about research, you know, and basically talk about like, you know, monitoring stuff. They mentioned like brain health, drug discovery, the idea of knowing what's going on inside our head. And we take stuff like you take a thing like aspirin, like, you know, we have theories about why aspirin works and what aspirin does. And it's but it's been something used them for 100 years there's a lot of other things that well it works and you know you didn't get an extra arm so we guess it's good but to be able to know what's really going on inside the head oh we're talking good idea we're talking about breaking down the black box because like we don't even know why anesthesiology works it's just magic to us but we know that it works and yep. then it allows us to take out you know appendices and so on yeah and there's like things like you know <clears throat> There's research right now using, like, let's say, microdosing, like LSD, or there's some are using other hallucinogens for helping people tr deal with trauma and stuff. And it's it's very controversial, but it might, you know, and that was in an area of research years ago looking at the potential for that. But the problem is, is we just don't know enough about what's going on and the fear of, like, well, this is really strange. Technology like this, like I said, it can help us understand what's going on inside of there. And there might be things that we said, no, this is crazy. We might go, oh, no, there's value here. And let's monitor this very closely. For instance, yeah, I mean, let's say drug use, you know, uh, like, yeah. So like, yeah. how do you, how do you cure addiction and stuff? Well, and that's, yeah, that's, that's fascinating because I mean, obviously in, in addiction specifically, uh, there's a lot of conversation about exactly how much it should be treated as a like disease versus a like mental impediment or something like that. And I think this would really be the, like, uh, uh, you know, a, a step toward bridging that gap because anybody who's been through addiction or had addiction in your family, 
you know very well that it's very much both of them. Like, like there, there is definitely dopamine reaction that changes behavior. And also it's something that you can get over through therapy and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's the, I, I would be fascinated to see studies where we could actually see like where these dopamine hits are coming from and how fast they're doing it. And, and uh, uh, just really understand uh you know, so much of these, these things that affect our culture. How, how far off does that well, put us from something where, um, and, and now this is me totally making something up, but let's say there's a, a baseball cap that you can set a, 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 a bar on and, and just say, I want to get more in the habit of, uh, we were talking just before we went live about, you know, making the bed every morning. Like, uh, imagine we start very small. It's a hat that you wear that you set a dial and you start with just one simple task. You get an extra dopamine hit when you make your bed every morning. And at some point you don't even need the hat. It just trains your mind to be the kind of person that makes your bed in the morning. Are, are, are we, are we cool with that level of, of behavior modification? I, I think that going into the chat, uh, Tally Zarel, who pointed out, who knows way more about this stuff than you know we do, is that you get into, she brought up plasticity of the brain. And anytime you try to modify or do something and change a behavior within the brain, there could be repercussions. And the first step is really, I think with the first step, Brian, would be like a Fitbit for the brain. It's just a Fitbit to sort of know like, hey, Brian, remember that really productive day you had the other day? This is what was going on before. What did you do? And you're like, I played hearts. What? <laughs> like uh, 18 minutes of hearthstone of 22 you go into a lull state you know um so i think that'd be the first one is just just that data but yeah i mean you, now you know we can put probes in the brain and like mm, i taste like chocolate you well, know? well, and, well just... and, and even without uh, uh probes in the brain at the very least we now have the data uh you know with the wearables that that we have on there uh we could track and and just at the end of every day uh, your watch can ask you scale of one to 10, how productive were you? How happy were you? How would whatever, blah, blah, blah. And after a year's worth of data, it's going to be able to say, Hey man, uh, not for nothing, but 70% of the best days that you've had have begun with you going for a walk. Uh, feel like going for a walk. All you got to do is t 20 minutes, uh, check yes, no. And then, and then after that, it's like, great. Uh, uh, just saying, bro. Bro to bro, uh, uh, your other best days follow about 15 minutes of playing Hearthstone mm -hmm. at this point, and then so on. And like, I, 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 that feels so much less intrusive, uh, but, but no less uh, effective. Yeah, I think that, you know, it'll, it'll obviously, we'll figure out more what we think is good or not. But again, you know, Tally in here to talk about this, but, you know, when, when they look at like the Radix can pull the lever and get them sugar and things like this they've done other stuff like just straight electrodes in there press a button pleasure with monkeys and stuff you just keep pressing it you know you just keep pressing it over and over again so the idea is to let if we're thinking machines give ourselves information to allow us to sort of change the way we function or the way we work rather than just straight on like let's just hit this but but there might be cases of people with like severe drug dependencies things like that where it might be no, we're better off bypassing this electrically and then eventually weaning you off of that because otherwise you're going to be three months. Yeah, that's one of the parts that blew my mind when I was reading about like a, a brain monkey cocaine studies where they had a button to just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, jack cocaine right into their brain. Is that uh, where do you sign up for these studies, by the way? Do you have to be a monkey? Can you, can you, can you, can you, yeah. But, but uh, who books that? Uh, there, th yeah. there were two types of monkeys that were studied, and uh, uh, the alpha monkeys, the ones who are in charge of the entire tribe, uh, apparently just very rarely would be like, yeah, I don't know, and I'll hit this one. Yeah, that's kind of fine. Whereas, uh, the monkeys that felt powerless, that were at the bottom parts of the social structure, just could not get enough of hitting the button that made things feel a <clears> little. <throat> bit more okay alpha monkeys were in charge of putting on monkey pantomime the other monkeys you know were known to get you know 48 hours straight <laughs> yeah exactly uh yeah i mean it's i'll tell you much what on I, you know when when did... oh, oh sorry i think i think we oh, had, sorry, yeah, we had we a little had, uh, local uh, jump uh, and, and Andrew, take a are you able to recall? Um, disconnect and reconnect on the Opal? Because we're getting some dropouts, and your sure. your Skype is also dropping a little bit. So, um, 
Uh, I, I don't really know um, if you're having connection issues. Uh, either way, I mean, I, I think in, in terms of this uh, conversation, the, the biggest thing that we've heard is, is the beginning of the idea of like our quantifiable self. And that's like Fitbits and wrist trackers and like all this stuff. Uh, you know, Brian, I know you use your Pebble a lot for sleep, like to say like, okay, peace of mind on uh, uh, how, how much you got sleep and, and presumably what you do with that is try to figure out, okay, well, what's the optimal time that I should go to sleep? Like, how do I, you know, like, do I feel better if I, you know, have more or less, blah, blah, blah. But where I think we are still trying to figure out is that we are harvesting a lot of data, but we really have not found great concrete ways to kind of understand it. Everything is its own piecemeal solution where I, I think if, if we have now this kind of granular level, all right, here's how your brain is processing all this kind of stuff. I feel maybe like even just having that other piece of data now can quantify a lot of this stuff that we're already tracking in terms of fitness and sleep. Yeah, and I suppose uh, what, what we definitely lack is some kind of self-reporting moment to moment quality of life ac action and maybe that's something that that could eventually come to an apple watch or something like that where it's just like uh if if there's something that can measure those either automatically the indicators of joy or manually you know by by triple tapping on your watch like this was a good moment that felt really good when they uh, have like emotional journaling apps where you say like how was your day today and you like look at trends that way like like we is, we, is, we've is, seen it, is it easy to do or or because it I sounds like so, homework yeah. when when well when you, I uh, hear it <laughs> but you, I, you know, it's it's a thing that uh i i i know that it's a thing that is kind of already used in in uh some form of therapy so uh i don't know how you automate it i don't know how you pull data out of it but i mean but I think there's part a whole of this, part of this also doing that though, already yeah like brian you you do like it is work if you want to get something out of it, right? Sure. Where, where I think, like, uh, ultimately, yeah, if, if you wanted to be like, all right, I have a commitment to track my happiness. I, I want to, like, mark out where I feel the most productive, where I feel the happiest, and the, and, and the best way to do that is by just recording my thoughts and emotions. Uh, you know, that will, it, it is going to be work. It is going to be sacrificed, but hopefully the juice is worth the squeeze. Right. Um, right. I'm just saying I would love for all that to happen and require less effort on yours. Truly. <laughs> That's a, stop me. If you've heard this mm. one before. <laughs> well, it's, it's, yeah, I think it's exciting for the ability to collect data and, and like, yeah, before, yeah, before we, we start, you know, and here's the pleasure app button. Um, which yeah. is scary, but we're going to get that. Uh, you know, I think that the, the exciting thing about this is that there is an entire area of what, getting that data and doing that. Uh, one of our friends, you know, Dr. Paul Zach, you know, he's got a whole company that's using the stuff like how do you monitor brain performance, whatever, to help improve, you know, outcomes for different situations, both for companies and things like this. It's a growing area, but it's also going to be my fear is that, you know, we're going to get, you know, the company's like, ah, oh, we figured out how to respond. We figured out a way to the pleasure sensor. And now we have the button to press to make you feel good. And it's like, well, maybe that's where we want to go. But let's get some more data first. And that's what's exciting about Colonel's idea of the potential, the, the promise of yeah. let's get a lot of really good data, a lot of really good data. Know what the hell's going on in there before we start, you know, wiring us up, you know, to machines. Um, so anyhow. Uh, I think it's an exciting area. If I was somebody who had studied in this area and was knowledgeable about this and listened to the show, uh, I would be reaching out to some of these companies that are doing this because uh, I think it's a very hot field. Very, very, very hot field. Not talking so, to anyone in particular. Yeah, not, who might be in not the chat talking, right now. No. no, not talking to a, a very smart person who we rely on for correcting us and giving us really good factual information. Just who speaking would be a very in good... general, that's general, what we're doing. In general, general terms. Uh, and now is a great time because telecommuting. You know, 
working with other organizations. It can, it can, it can erase borders and commutes, you know, just there's a <laughs> lot. Telemedicine is huge. Hypothetically, one person here may be working with another company that was, you know, high tech we've talked about before entirely by a video conference call and so you never know what's possible so you never anyhow. know you never know you never here's know. what we do know friends and that's uh your support makes this show go at patreon.com slash weird things we'd like to thank everybody that has become a member on patreon.com slash weird things you guys are making the world go round for us and we could not be happier about it Head on over there right now, patreon.com slash weird things. Get your custom RSS feed so you can have uh, uh, the the episodes out even uh, faster than they come out on Apple and Spotify and everywhere else that people listen to it. Uh, thank you so much, everybody that has done it. And thank you to anybody who will do it in the future. Patreon.com slash weird things. You know what, Just Thank you to everybody who's doing it. Everybody doing it. We're so glad you've you did it. <laughs> Thinking of a Mel Brooks movie when you said that. <laughs> oh, you do it. We all do it. I just did it, and I'm ready to do it again. Uh, one of my one of my favorite sort of pet theories. It was a fringe theory a while ago, and now it's actually gaining more more credibility. Um, we've talked about this before, and there's actually some more evidence about this. Was the idea that Neanderthals may have made it to America, and the reason that that's always been sort of uh, hesitant is one is like, it's not, you know, you, you, you base your sort of archeological theory on things you find and absence of what we thought were Neanderthal artifacts and stuff would be kind of a good reason to think like, you know, they never made it here. There was this one incident where somebody found like a Neanderthal hand ax somewhere in like, you know, like Mississippi or ten North Carolina or somewhere in a, in a riverbed. And they're like, wow, a Neanderthal hand ax. And it turned out that there had been like a, a, a boat that's boiler had exploded. And a lot of the times the ballast they would pick up in Europe would be a bunch of European rocks. And they think it was just ballast from there that got there. Which oh my gosh. So, so, so it's the equivalent of like a, a Martian space rock that, that like a, a meteor hit hits Mars hard enough that Martian rocks just kind of fly and then land at the South pole in, in uh, uh, <laughs> on earth. So similarly, it's like, well, we just need some rocks. Let's grab some rocks. And then uh, uh, through man-made movement, suddenly it shows up over there. That's crazy. Yeah, but there's been some other evidence of like really, they used to talk about what was like Clovis, which was like what we thought was like, you know, there was the oldest sort of proven sort of area, which we had human habitation in Americas, you know, the, like the Clovis settlement. And then I talk about pre-Clovis. And Cl we keep uh, moving Clovis, that date. New, New Mexico or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. That. Uh, that's that's really inland. Uh, I, I would have expected more, uh, uh, like like well, like Alaska. Well, again, that's not saying the first spot. That's like where we found the best, right? But in, in you know a lot of places, like the further north you get, the further subject they were to glaciation and stuff too. But there now there are other older stuff we've been finding. So we've been finding it used to be mm, we don't know pre Clovis. Not so sure now. Like yes, we know they were there before because they didn't just teleport to there, but. Uh, there is some actually there was a you know a couple articles that came out about you know finding some other sites of like 100,000 year old 130,000 year old the the California Struti Mastodon site where this is 130,000 years ago where scientists have said hey we found some bones that look like they have the same sort of fracture marks that Neanderthals used when they were cracking open bones highly subjective but interesting because just as a backup 130,000 years ago we had another interglacial you know, we had another up and down period. So you could have had a spread of, of Neanderthals and maybe even Homo sapiens. And then we had the Ice Age picked up again. Um, I mean, I, I guess that makes inherent sense to me just in that um, uh, what, what our monkey brains want is a simple narrative. But the way almost everything happens is noisy. So if mm -hmm. I picture a noisy progression from one area to another, then, then it seems like part of that noise would certainly involve both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals at the same time, right? Yeah, or Neanderthals way before. But yeah, I think that's, that's I think noise is sort of the best way to describe it. Because like, you know, we, we wanted that, that, that old school, like, this is the human tree, and it starts here, and it's just this straight progression here. And it's like, that ain't what happened. It's a bush and 
dead ends and stuff and <laughs> yeah. co minglings and dirty hominid sex, you know, and so <laughs> dirty, you know. dirty interspecies. I mean, look, you know, Liger, yeah. Liger didn't happen by accident. I mean, no. the, the <laughs> we're, we're the Ligers of, you know, hominids here. We're part Neanderthal, part Homo sapiens. Some of us are also part magical. Ones. Yep. Yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> So uh, I, I like this because I think that part of it is that in some cases, like in archaeology, you would say, well, we're not going to go bother looking for human things here because why would there be? And there's a lot of amazing stuff that's still in museums and stuff. That was, you know, Jack Horner, who was a paleontologist. It was he was working with was it was Mary Schweitzer was the one that decided to crack open. They had a, they had a T-Rex bone and they couldn't fit it onto this helicopter because they were in the middle of the Badlands, wherever they were getting this from. And Jack's like, well. We'll just we'll just cut it in half. And people, oh, well, yeah, you cut it in half, you glue it back together. It's still a T Rex bone. And then Mary Schweitz is like, "Hey, can I look to see what's inside of this bone? The evidence of those proteins? You know, this this you cracked open the t- and saw what looked like cells that looked like other material like that. There is a couple papers or stuff talking about the fact that they found these weird little balls of iron that when they tried to pull them apart, they looked like they may have been fragmentary DNA and that came from. Let's cut a bone. By the open way, see what's inside. The pilot of that helicopter, Michael Crichton. Yeah. Just putting that out there. <laughs> it's like, hey, what's going on back there? Mm, yeah. no. uh, but that goes to show you that, like, we don't know. There might be a lot of stuff just sitting in boxes, museums, and stuff. But like, well, now this is sixty thousand years ago. It wouldn't be like, well, let's go back and take a look. We don't know. You know, there might be instances where there may be. You know, once you sort of know that something's possible, you look at things differently. So, yeah, I wonder, uh, I wonder how quickly we're going to get to a point where we can so perfectly scan things as they are that we feel entitled to break them apart, break them apart and find out what's inside, because that, that, that's something that would be just totally anathema right now. But I mean, at some point we're going to know everything there is to know about the outside of the head of this you know triceratops or whatever and it's like well why are we keeping this thing around when we can find out what's inside and just start breaking it apart well yeah that's that's horner sort of talk about there's a lot of lot of things we have a lot of t-rexes he's like we got a lot of t-rex bones you know it's not a super super rare specimen compared to other ones and he's like yeah just crack them open and and part of it too is it like yeah, paleontologists who are used to studying, let's say, the morphological structure of something, and then you have a smaller subset of like the number of people doing paleo microbiology is much smaller. So for part of it comes down to, oh, my skill set's this. I'm not ready to crack this thing open because what am I going to do? And I've encountered this like, I've I've dealt with scientists who are like doing like you know, have cameras counting like fish swimming by a camera and trying to count how many species there are and their way to count the species of like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage is just to have a graduate student with a clicker. And you're like, well, you know, computer science, like you could build a thing in four hours that would do image recognition. And they just look at you like, what is this magic called right, image right, recognition? Right. <laughs> and you're like, this person is one of the smartest people I've ever met, but that's the domain issue. So I guess that's the thing here. It's sort of that domain issue. Well, and, and exactly what, where it's like, like uh, uh, in, in the world of media, um, I, I, I implore people, uh, to not make the mistake of, of, of people think, um, what do I have and what can I trade it for? What do I want? You know, what I have is a stage show. What I want is money. And that's the whole world they live in. And, and that, you know, we've talked about it on after things or whatever is why I implore people to remember there are multiple currencies and that you can trade you know, by taking the long way around, you could get much more results uh, in a more automated kind of way. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's the advantage of, you know, we, we some things got brought up here about, you know, the problems of like funding, et cetera. And it's one of the things that working with people across disciplines, you know, going across, leaving your particular department and going across the campus to go talk to somebody in a different field, go talk to the electrical engineers about about imaging, you know, go talk to them about this stuff and say, hey, what are you guys doing that might be cool here? And some of the best developments in science have happened that way. I mean, well, years it, ago, it, 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 this is like a, uh, this is like Matt Ridley's point of of ideas having sex and coming up mm-hmm. with with new you know uh, uh, mutations as a result. Yeah, I had a friend that was a member of the California Academy of Sciences, and one of the things he talked about was like they did a cool expedition where they brought like 
biologists and even like physicists and a bunch of cross disciplinary people and they did an expedition like borneo or something and then what it was instead of sending one person out from the field there they brought a bunch of different people from the disciplines end of the day they just talk about what they observed and what they saw and it says one of the most illuminating thing in the world because all of a sudden you know the botanist is talking to you know you know um you know, talking to somebody who's a specialist in, let's say, a certain kind of an ant, and they point out something about the tree structure, whatever the leaves fall, and all like, oh, yeah, oh, wow, I didn't realize that. That might explain this. And, you know, it's just, it's, hey, it's, talking it's, to people is a great idea. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a bit like, and an, I, I, I guess we should bother to tell it, even though uh, it, it seems kind of cliche and trite to us because we've heard it so much but you know the parable of the the five blind people who encounter a uh, 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 an elephant and because mm -hmm. each of them is feeling a different part of the element elephant it's like uh, well this is clearly a tree because you're grabbing a foot or you know this is very clearly a snake because you're grabbing a snout or whatever um uh yeah people should talk that's our controversial yeah. take <laughs> uh you know we need, people need to talk about too uh have you guys received any mystery packages in the mail? Any mystery seeds? Um, no. I, no. No. Number no, one, no I, 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 I have to ask whether no. or not you're a cop. Uh, Am I a cop? <laughs> uh, what's funny is uh, I did receive a text message from our friend Mike Lamar, who uh, uh, grows his own uh, uh, miracle berries, miracle fruit and asked if I wanted some. So uh, unless that's what we're talking about. Uh, uh, well, I, add him to the FBI watch list because people around the country reporting receiving packages of mystery seeds they did not order. And the origin apparently is China. And so there's some warnings have been sent to people like, hey, uh, if you get these mystery seeds, don't plant them. That's amazing. Okay, but before what? we get there, just to explain, uh, uh, miracle fruit is a uh, it's a berry that has miraculin in it that uh, that that temporarily dulls all of your bitter sen sensors on your tongue, so it makes everything taste crazy sweet. You can get it in pill form, but I didn't know that Michael Amar was uh, uh, growing his own, and and so he's he's gonna send him over, and I'll I'll report on how that goes. But what are these mystery seeds? We don't know. We just know that apparently people have been receiving mysterious packages postmarked from China containing seeds with no other instructions. And so now they're putting out warnings to people like, don't plant these seeds. I mean, what? so and, you should at least eat them, right? Yeah. So, like Justin's like, saying, what? Yeah, well, no, because we just keep looking at it and there it's, it's postmarked from China. God knows how, like... I, this this is a weird thing. Well, well, like, so, so, we, okay, have, okay. have we studied them? So, what so, do we know? So here here is another weird thing that we know is happening from China is that people are getting random merchandise from China. Um, uh, and yeah. and usually what it is is it's part of somebody else's uh, uh, credit card scam or whatever. They have to make quote unquote legitimate purchases using stolen credit cards. So they just pick a, an address at random. So all of a sudden you get like a, you know, a knockoff Pikachu or what have you. So, so people are already getting weird stuff that they did not order from China. China also is a market rich in exotic herbs and spices so it doesn't surprise me entirely if this is an extension of that story where this is really part of just a stolen credit card testing front. Well, maybe. The problem is, is that these things have been marked incorrectly and with the other sort of, some things they'll do, like they'll mail, you know, mail, mail items and ask for reviews. And there's some other things that, so that was a connection that was drawn. Like, is this related to this? But like, these have been mismarked as other stuff to sort of bypass the agricultural thing. And if you're going to send something for that, you don't want something that's going to normally would get stopped at the border for, you know, by the department of agriculture. Um, yeah. we, we, and so multiple States, South Carolina, Minnesota, et cetera, uh, oh, are that's having right. reports. I, I, I see you as pointing out that another aspect of it was sometimes they were sending them to people to goose their online sales rankings or, or yeah. their, their star reviews or whatever. They, so, yeah, their Alibaba legitimacy, you know, number of, of items. So, so uh, uh, Dr. Whiskey, apparently this is happening in Tennessee where he lives. And he says that the agriculture departments are afraid that these are invasive species, mm -hmm. uh, which if you're not familiar 
You can look up like kudzu is one that uh, uh, has really just taken over and is like kind of a, a botanist nightmare in terms of it just never going away. And it's very, very hard to contain. But another one that I wound up uh, covering way back in the day uh, when I was uh, writing for the morning call in Allentown is hogweed. You familiar with hogweed? No. So it is a an invasive uh, plant that is. It actually looks kind of pretty. Like it has like these like uh, uh, white little uh, flowers that pop up from it. Unfortunately, its sap can produce third degree birds. Whoa! On your yeah, on your when 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 uh, applied to your skin can cause third degree burns and. I wound up becoming aware of this. The story that we were telling was a local uh, council member was just obsessed with how hogsweed looked and was just very for it. And he's like, well, you know, number one, I think the scientists are lying about the, 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 the sap burning you. And also it looks pretty. So I would rather have these all, all throughout this, you know, uh, uh, a very blue collar area of Pennsylvania. And, uh, and, he was throwing the seeds out there and and he was part of the reason why it was <laughs> he was spreading johnny acid seed <laughs> basically <laughs> this Other guy i'll tell you what yeah he was he was an awesome awesome guy to cover because he gave me two, my two best stories i think i ever reported on were that one and then uh uh he also uh, misgendered a prison guard on purpose and it wound up getting probably the best story i ever wrote was a prison guard who was transitioning while as uh, uh, while while you know serving as a prison guard, which was awesome, awesome story because of this one asshole. Wow, this uh, apparently the UK they've been getting them too. Uh, so I it's one of these things where like probably there's going to be a very stupid innocent explanation here, but the other thing, like you just said, the idea of like you know if 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 you wanted to be a jerk and spread a lot of invasive species somewhere, just send them some seeds and stuff and. Well, that, you know, uh, we don't... that that would also be, man, not to get too tinfoil hat, um, that seems like a very, very cost-effective, easy skunk works uh, operation mayhem uh, thing to do. Like, if, if you've got a budget uh, and you're part of a government and, and your, your, your directive is, you know, uh, mess stuff up, uh, that seems like a very cost-effective way to create just a little bit of chaos. You don't know... Yeah, yeah, like like any seed, you don't know which of them will uh, bloom into a thousand problems. <laughs> yeah, like maybe not reporting right away. You had a leak from one of your labs of the coronavirus. Yeah, <laughs> letting right. it become the world's problem before you went out and said, "Hey, listen, there's something going on here." Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I it's one of these things. Like, Mike, need more information. Need more information. No more information. But, 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 but by the time we get more information, it, it will be science and no longer weird things. So yes. so we're reporting at exactly the right time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. No, for us, yeah, we're we're exactly right there. But like, yeah, I just, I, 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 I don't find anything logically wrong with any of your theories, Brian. Yeah. yeah. Makes them no less weird. Yep. Uh, gentlemen, you want to do picks? Yeah, dude. Um, when do you guys go first? Because I, I I feel complicated. Oh, yeah. Tijuana Jackson, Purpose Over Prison, available on Friday. Go. Uh, uh, we had Romney on Night Attack, so if you want to hear him talk about it, uh, uh, then please do it. It's the the story of a man who gets out of prison and wants to be a motivational speaker, and uh, the relationship he has with his parole officer, who's played by the hilarious uh, Regina Hall. Uh, Brian and I have uh, blink and you miss it uh, uh, cameo in in the movie, but please support this because to me, nothing would be funnier if this is like one of the twenty movies that come out in twenty twenty that we can do a four year consideration campaign 
with Romney and Regina Hall. Like we, we were, if, we if, were if, joking. If there's only twenty. If there's only twenty movies coming coming out, then Romney has his best shot ever at an Oscar, and we will indeed put put some muscle into it uh, uh, if, if if we can. So well, it, please, it, let's let's try to make this hit. Keep keep in mind also. I mean, we've moved the needle on on various projects. We are our crowd, our team, Diamond Club, Chat Realm. You know, all, all of the weirdos out there. Uh, uh, we know the limits of what we can normally do. This is an unbelievable year in which all of the rules have changed, and it's possible that all of us buying this movie twice, once on iTunes, once on Google Play, will get it to the top of the charts, uh, uh, and, and, and then after that, we can make the right amount of noise in the right order that our friend with this independently financed, outside of Hollywood regular system movie could win legitimate awards like uh if you wanted to make a list of the things that it would take in order to have brian and and justin appear in an award-winning movie one of those things might involve a global pandemic that breaks the entire movie system for just one year guess what here we are (laughs) or murder suicide don't rule that one out guys that's okay (laughs) Uh, yes, no, definitely, definitely. Everybody buy, uh, this movie. Um, my, uh, my daughter out of nowhere, uh, I guess, uh, one of the nice things about kids is that they don't tend to remember anything that they saw four years previous. And so Josie, that's a weird thing to say, Brian. Well, so, so Josie, you know, had recently watched uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, uh, but then she was like, uh, "Hey, was Korra was the Legend of Korra good?" And it's like, uh, uh, "I don't know. Let's take a look." And I'll say, um, it, it, "I think this series gets a little bit distracted after the first season, but the first four episodes of The Legend of Korra." is fantastic beyond words. Uh, it's got J.K. Simmons in it. It uh, is a totally different take. If you've watched Avatar The Last Airbender but have never seen Korra, do yourself a favor, watch Korra. It's coming to, if, if, if you don't want to spend money, it's coming to Netflix, I believe, on August 14th. So uh, just uh, uh, sit back and wait for it. But The Legend of Korra is great. Did I see you and Uncle Jason running around the backyard with your shirts off drinking moonshine? (laughs) Oh, go back to sleep, sweetheart. (laughs) Episode 22, Modern Rogue. Uh, uh, My pick is, I I just went back to go reread the book, but thought I'd also watch the movie too, 1984. Oh, wow. Uh, Both of which are really good. Yeah, I, you know, I... I, I picked before Mr. Jones, which was just a great account of like, you know, a, a journalist, an idealistic journalist who was, you know, supported the kind of the communist ideals in 1933 going into Russia and discovering what was going on in Ukraine. And it's a really good example of, of like what happens when well-intentioned people sort of come face to face with the reality. And part of that story, too, was about George Orwell. And, and they open up with sort of a bit about Animal Farm, et cetera. And this was a guy who was very much... Uh, not a not initially a critic of these ideas, a guy very much supporter of those ideals, and then his analysis of it, and you know, Animal Farm talking about the Russian Revolution, 1984 talking about sort of what happens in, to some degree, what happened with like propaganda, et cetera, throughout World War II and sort of a larger scale. One of the things that struck me was very interesting was that uh, you go back and you look at it kind of from looking at it through the lens of his time and what he had observed. We tend to think about 1984 and propaganda and stuff being the thing for the masses, but the primary target of propaganda in 1984 was the educated class. You know, uh, Winston was a guy that worked in the Ministry of Truth, basically, manu- you know, changing historical accounts in newspapers. The proletariat, the masses, didn't care about that stuff. That was the educated class gaslighting themselves, which I thought was sort of a very interesting sort of touch because we tend to think about like all those dumb people being easily manipulated. And part of what Orwell is saying, like, well, actually, here's the, the quote, smart people being very easily manipulated because of their ideals. And so, again, I enjoy reading it again because you just pick up themes going, oh, ah, you know, I, 
it's there. It just wasn't obvious to me. And this is part of what he was addressing, you know, was that. If you can find it, there is a version of it that's read by uh, uh, Frank Muller, who uh, I've, I've mentioned multiple times, is my favorite audiobook reader of all time. He gives a, a, a weight and a gravitas to it that is that is just delightful. Um, I, I don't think it's currently in rotation in Audible, so you might have to get creative on finding it. But uh, but uh, the Frank Muller version was was fantastic. Excellent. I'll look that up because yeah, I think I want to do an audiobook version of it next. So uh, that's my pick, Bryce. Uh, yeah, I got a pick. Uh, this is uh, you, you may know the work of Zach Gage. Uh, he is the designer behind Spell Tower. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, cool. He's got, an, I forget the name of the Apple Arcade game, but he's got a new game out uh, with Jack Schlesinger called Good Sudoku, uh, which is a evolution of the Sudoku format. If you don't, you probably have probably seen Sudoku. It's the nine by nine grid where you have to fill in all of the numbers so that each number only shows up in each column and each row and each square uh, only one time. And what's really interesting about good Sudoku is uh, I guess they've, they've written a bunch of algorithmic uh, smart computer stuff uh, to help, uh, to help teach you how to play and how to teach you techniques. Um, oh my goodness. That looks astonishingly close to the markings that I make when I play regular Sudoku because mm -hmm. Sudoku is not a game of guessing what goes in a square. It's a game of eliminating everything that can't be in a square right. and then putting in, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 what, what remains. Mm -hmm. um, wow. That's so wild. That, that's exactly how I mark mine up. And, and it's, it's really, one of the really nice things about it is uh, as a part of all the smart stuff that they put in there, if you ever get stuck, you know, you have a hint button and it'll say, hey, this is the next step that you need to make. Like it can look at it on the fly and say, OK, this is the next step because these two cells have this condition and you can hit a button and it'll show you the things that you need to. So, so it, it doesn't give you out. an answer. Instead, it reminds you of the process that 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 you haven't done yet. Sure. I mean, you can use it to get have it when you hit the hint. I mean, you get the hint. Yeah. Um, and and so I think that's that's really cool. Like the and the other nice thing is it's free to play. Like if you want it to be ad free or to have like colors and stuff, uh, I think it's four or five dollars. Uh, my own my only criticism of it is a very ephemeral one that I believe will get worked out. But not all of the smart stuff in the game has been totally figured out. They have a mode. So there's play mode where you play puzzles and an improve mode where they have all of the techniques and it will generate a puzzle and say, hey, you can use this technique in this situation. Go and find it or hit the button and we'll show you and you'll learn how to do it. Some of those don't work yet. Um, some of them, <laughs> it, it's, it's this weird bug where it'll generate a puzzle and you'll spend five or 10 minutes looking for the right cells and you'll hit the hint button and it'll say, this is not a solvable puzzle. <laughs> it's like, what am I supposed to do with that? They know about it. They've got updates coming, but I, I think it's really cool and you can start it for free. Um, and they've got like a wide range of, of difficulties. So like you can start with, with very easy stuff where there's always going to be a single cell available up to stuff where, Oh, you're, there are techniques where you have to look inside of the three by three squares and then techniques where you have to look outside of that. Um, it's, it's, it's very cool and it, and it looks very sharp. The sound design is very cool. There's a really good, like cha-ching sound when you, uh, when you, when you get stuff right. Uh, so it's called good Sudoku. It's on, uh, iOS. I don't know if it's on Android. Pro probably not. I don't think Zach Gage makes a lot of Android stuff. Yeah. Cause it's called good Sudoku, <laughs> not spyware Sudoku. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been Good weird. <laughs> Not spyware weird. No. <laughs> All right. Hey, that's a show, everybody. Good stuff. Good stuff. That's great. Uh, uh, Bonnie called in the middle of that. Let me duck out and make sure everything's okay. All righty. Uh, and I'll be back in like five minutes. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get started with after things here in a few minutes, everybody. Um, I, uh, I have been playing... Um, Yahtzee with buddies on on the iPhone. They got a free like a, like a words with friends version of Yahtzee. Yeah, and this app is so annoying. 
<laughs> it is. Is it? Is it? I so I'm, I'm assuming it's Hasbro or whoever owns Yahtzee um, that did it. Yeah, I think that's right. And and it's 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 been around for a long time, right? Like I'm 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 pretty sure this Yahtzee game just has been out there for for many years. And yeah. so when you go into it, you're like, oh, there's a lot of like junk around this game right there's clans there's leaderboards there's daily adventures there's solo modes there's like a second solo mode there's all these coins and scratch offs and a claw machine my god man i i swear to god it, it's the people that actually own the properties for these like games are it's they're chasing whatever dumb thing is happening right in this moment which of course becomes stupid and irrelevant in five seconds but it's like but then I it sticks have... around forever well oh yeah no because they never update it and they're like more is better right like i swear to god my kingdom for a risk mode where it was deliberately thought of as like oh no this this is a game that should take you know a month uh, if, if six people are playing and you were just only pinged when it's your turn and you're able to see what the stuff is like mm -hmm. uh it's both on the desktop and on the app like you don't just have to focus on the app you can pull it up in a web browser or or in something else like yeah god i would love that and it's so simple i mean like indie games do it all the time mm -hmm. and uh uh the rights holders just can't figure out a way to get out of their own way. Well, and that's, you know, that's this Yahtzee game, right? Like it's at least like the other really, the most annoying thing is that uh, it will do, like you don't have to play in real time. You can go turn by turn yeah. with people, but they also just give you tons of notifications. There's a new event starting to join a Yahtzee family. Uh, you, yeah, you've got time to double your dice currency. Like, like exactly. Yeah, freaking leave me alone. I just want to play Yahtzee. Man, a clean, good a Yahtzee clean game. Good Yahtzee. A clean game. I would pay for it. Like, it just give me a clean, good experience. Oh, yeah. Like, God. So IC says, can't you control the notifications? Well, the game. That's on the game, right? Like, I could turn notifications off, but then it won't tell me when it's my turn. And that's what I need. Yeah. Um, I guess I could just have it on the badge and just see when I got the little dot on my thing. Maybe, maybe but that's then that's not. Them. I mean, again, you're eroding the experience. You do want to be alerted when it's your turn. Yeah. Right. Like you want that. That is that is a feature. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why you're playing it on an app and not on a on a board game with your friends. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's playing stuff like that that makes me like really. Um, really appreciate the work on the like the new york times crossword app because it yeah. follows you everywhere it updates you know it's super low data um you know it has stats and you don't have to like even like the good sudoku like that game's good but it doesn't have iCloud syncing so yeah uh, i've started on my phone and now if i play it on my ipad it doesn't keep my progress yeah so it's like well hopefully that's that's the next thing that they do um because it's you know just the bloat it's bloat it's bloating dog bloat it's bloating out are y'all gloating about the bloat no we're we're griping about the gloat oh the old gripe gloat bloat <laughs> the uh, old the old gri gripe bloat grope mm -hmm. nope grope doesn't fit in no, no never mind yeah. i got nothing swing and, swing and a miss uh <laughs> justin or, or andrew do you guys need to go take a break uh i'm good I think Andrew's Andrew does. Did. Okay. Oh, I did. Does. Oh, you did. Okay. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, then I think we'll we'll get ready to do after things here in another minute or so. Uh, we did not get an email. Uh, we got we get a very nice email from uh David, letting us know that he would also not use the hair the barber bot from from last week and <laughs> <laughs> recommended people go and get a shaving kit. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, I'm not saying, but I'm just going to say that Bonnie showed me a picture of uh, six wrinkly newborn Weimaraner puppies the other day. Mm -hmm. And you're getting, you're getting the pup? 
The pup's coming in. I mean, I'm not saying I, I don't sorry, I didn't say that. I, I, I'm just talking about that this this rando photo that of, of newborn pups that are that have been born. Who knows? Who knows what the world holds? Uh, dude, that's exciting. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, are you gonna let us see the pic and we see the cute puppies, or are you just gonna cute tease us? Um, yeah. I I don't know if she forwarded it to me or not. Let me let me see if. Uh, I mean, I remember her flashing it at me, and I was very excited. Got a pup tease here. Pup tease. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's the reverse of a pup date. Right. Pup tease. Um. Mm. <laughs> scrolling back. I'm getting back to the argument about the. Uh, water dispenser upstairs <laughs> oh, I, I totally didn't i totally didn't google hitler's favorite dog breed just so you know i totally didn't. oh <laughs> was it was it a, a weimer honor no it was german shepherd uh, it, it had to have been right i guess that makes sense but i did my brain didn't want to put two and two together on that one uh uh no you don't have to do you don't you don't have to do this right now brian I mean, what else am i gonna do a, a podcast so you can get ready for your other <laughs> podcasts <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm good to go. Okay. Uh, then, uh, you good, Andrew? Yeah, I'm just reading about the fate of Hitler's dog here. Oh gosh. Hopefully, it's better yeah. than his alligator. No, the alligator's still alive. No, the no, alligator turns, died. Turns out they put the dog on trial at Nuremberg. <laughs> <laughs> the dog said he was just. <laughs> they said that's no excuse, and he went to Argentina, yeah. uh, covered in Nazi gold. <laughs> True story. Uh, all right, then uh, I'll count you in. Oh. oh. Oh no! I forgot this. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh. Oh. If you need another reason to hate Hitler. Oh. Uh, oh, that's right. So he he killed he, the dog first, right? He, he tested the cyanide capsule on Blondie to see if it was really gonna kill. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what a monster! <laughs> <laughs> finally finally we have a reason for all of us to universally despise this man <laughs> this, this, this. listen if the death of millions of innocent people isn't enough you know he killed his dog testing cyanide <laughs> like why <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah jeez <laughs> oddly enough that's will be persuasive for some people <laughs> guess so all right i'm gonna count you in andrew in three two hello and welcome to the after things show i'm andrew main joined by justin robert young hello friends brian brushwood hello beautiful people and less beautiful people but dirt, certainly beautiful, Mr. Bryce Castillo. Oh, hello to everybody out yeah, there. I was, I was trying to be, com man. I was trying to be inclusive, and you made it weird. Huh? Yeah, but you just did this. Hello, beautiful, and less beautiful people. And then I gotta go say Bryce's name. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where do I yeah. go? <laughs> You're right. That, I would say thank you to everybody listening, regardless. Uh, of how you look. Yeah, uh, Bryce's wonderful cherubic face <laughs> greeting us all. Watching Indeed. those audio listeners just feel a warm glow in your heart, and it's the same thing. <laughs> hey, uh, I have a question. So, um, I've been I've been doing like a grown up sort of some grown up work for the past couple weeks, which I'll talk about at a later date, and uh, video conferencing stuff like this. And uh, I haven't had like a real job in like twenty years. Um, and I mean, real, I mean, I've worked with production Wait, stuff and all this. You've had gigs, but not a job. Yeah. Yeah. Not a thing. Like, I mean, I've, the TV production I've had, like, Hey, yeah, you know, we need you to, you got to show up. You're like, all right, I'll show up. Okay, fine. You're like, no, we have cameras. You have to show up. Like, fine. I'll show up for your stupid cameras. Like, no, this is what you wanted. And you're like, Oh, fine. <laughs> Put it all on me. It's like, also the um, cameras aren't even sentient. Why are you calling them stupid? Also, this is a yeah. very weird way for a star of a reality television show to be acting right now. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, I've been working on a project and whatnot. And so I, I'm I'm fascinated by this whole remote through the magic of video teleconferencing and stuff, experience and stuff. And I see how it can be kind of 
helpful, but I also see like, man, like this kind of sucks too. Cause sometimes you just want to like, nah, I just need to be able to be in the room and talk about stuff, whatever. And I know we're an to curious about what's going to stay, what's not going to stay. What have been your experiences? Uh, I will say that I've actually deeply enjoyed, uh, I have done many video conferences for over the last 10 years and I've never enjoyed them more than in the last six months. And that is entirely because we built out a production studio that allows us to divert attention away, to be present and then not be present, to, to mute ourselves easily with hardware, to put something on screen that says taking a dump BRB. You know, uh, 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 I, I think that once people catch up, to that level of control of their involvement in these experiences, uh, I think other people will really, really like video uh, <laughs> video uh, chats. Oh, by the way, on screen it says now spoiler in taking a dump BRB. Sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> I take a dump. Yeah, but but um, uh, I, I I think that uh, the genie's out of the bottle because I think I think. Meetings, as they have always been, have always been dumb, taken too long, and quietly caused people more people to dial out than to dial in. And video meetings, uh, I, I think, have many less of those problems. What about yeah, you, Justin? I, I don't know. I don't know if they have less of those problems. I think that they are going to have their own problems, which I, I think... A lot of people are realizing now that uh, uh, Zoom can actually increase your meeting load because it is less uh, of a barrier to entry because you don't have to uh, worry about everybody being in the same building or uh, stuff like that. What what I do think is out of the bottle is adoption of these tools and the acceptance from management and bosses that this is not like just a fancy way to play hooky. Um, where I suspect that we will go is what a lot have uh, a lot of, of uh, tech companies have kind of done for a few years, and I don't think it's necessarily some philosophical uh, difference, but it is a a change in leadership that comes from understanding that these um, these tools exist. But I, I think that you're just going to see more work from home, even after. Uh, offices are open, you might see a push away from spending a ton of money on a big grandiose office. But in, in general, I think the average person is going to have more of a situation like what a lot of like Silicon Valley companies have where it's like, quote unquote, infinite time off, uh, because you're always going to be able to work from home or, or, or take time uh, uh, to yourself because the company isn't worried that you're totally out of pocket and untethered if you're only on Slack and Zoom. I'm trying to figure out like how present you need to be, like how responsive, like I, I'm a person, like I work, I'll work at 3 a.m., I'll get up in the morning, do stuff, I'll go back to sleep and get stuff. And that sort of thing for me is to figure out like what's the tempo or what's the pace of doing stuff too. You know, yeah. and, I, I, and I, think I will say this much. Um, it's interesting um, how by being trained and, and, and uh, you know, earning our credits in the world of podcasting, it sort of uh, shifts our understanding of the stakes for those meetings. Um, uh, I took a meeting at uh, 1030 a.m. today with two people who I knew are friends. Um, definitely had no shame taking it clearly in bed, having just woken up. Like, like it was time and the phone rang and I'm like, what's up? Let's talk. And they're all like, like they were both clearly shocked, fully dressed and bathed and all this stuff. And it's like me knowing that this was a meeting and not a podcast had no problem. Be like, yeah, no, I'm in bed. Cause uh, I'm going to start podcasting and I'm going to podcast till nine o'clock tonight. So uh, you have me. What's up? <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and I, I suspect there's only going to be more of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I I have this uh, 
I keep a, a polo shirt, like a collared shirt. So if I have fun, if I have a meeting, I just take my t-shirt off. I put this on. They're like, hey, guys, what's going on? Because I want to look, you know, I mean, I haven't had, you know, I haven't had a haircut in months, so I can't help that. You know, and that's Boy, one thing I've been in meetings I, I, with people. I, 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 real quick, uh, uh, sidebar, uh, how are haircut you doing on, on the getting over the hump of the long hair thing? Because, like, like it's almost <laughs> like I'm getting... I'm getting dangerously close. As long as it, we talked about this earlier, as long as I don't wear a green shirt, nobody calls me Shaggy, and I'm getting closer and closer to Sawyer from Lost. How are how how, how are you doing? I mean, I think I'm just full on Shaggy, you know, from Scooby Doo here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, for, I, for I, now. I admit to that. I, you look now. like I don't you look have like the your front, luxurious you got the curly straight hair. locks. Yeah. You yeah, actually, you actually your, look your... like a, 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 the lead singer of Ministry, circa early '90s or so. <laughs> I was gonna say you look like the lead singer of the 1975, who's also got long curly hair. Okay, yeah, all right, all right, it's all, right. all good. We're I'll getting take there. Those. We're gonna get over the Young hump, Ted and we're Bundy. all gonna look great with majestic long hair. Um, yeah, exactly. Wh- Mine just gets so curly, like it just goes in the back. So, uh, one of the, uh, the the things when you work. Uh, we- when you when you work virtual or work from home a lot, especially if you have like weird hours, like like I do weird hours too, um, is like uh, it makes it very easy to uh, uh, to, to to like you like you, have, you sometimes you have to very actively be like no I am off right now I'm don't don't text me don't call me um, because when when you take the when you take the step of like well i'm going to break out of the 9 to 5 office hours availability it can be very easy to feel like you are always because you've got you know slack and uh and any other number of ways that you can be reached uh it can be difficult to to kind of have a boundary like that or to set times where it's okay to you to not be working on something right now um and i i, I think w- i i, I think if we're talking about things that may or may not persist beyond this moment right now, like I, I think we might see more of that and people need to know that. I, I want to throw out here something too, though. Like I've, I know it, this is a really, it is obviously a very hard time. It's a very hard time, but I know some people who are sort of thriving doing new stuff because, you know, a, a, a complicated wise man once said chaos is a ladder. And, you know, and that sort of means when everybody's sitting around trying to figure out what happens, what happens, what happens, the people who start figuring out how to organize their life and organizing things around them, there's a lot of opportunity. And there is a tremendous amount of opportunity right now. And, you know, we've uh, we've got a mutual friend who's, you know, in the middle of a startup that's getting funded and doing kind of really cool stuff because start of an idea he had and that grew. And now there's a team of people working on this. I've seen that happen where people are like, Hey, there's an opportunity to happen here. And there are a lot of people who are just do not want to sit still and they want to make things happen. Yeah. And I think that's the thing to think about is it like you kind of have an opportunity you couldn't do before. Like if I wanted to create a company right now, like, yeah, I could work with people in any city around the world and say, Hey, let's make a thing. Let's do a thing. Let's have some calls. Let's organize some stuff and make some stuff happen. And, there is tremendous opportunity. This has opened up the doorway because what would have been like, ah, that sounds a little bit amateurish, you know, before to try to do a Skype call and create a virtual startup. Not now. Uh, yeah. As a wise man once said, chaos is a ladder. It's <laughs> This is an opportunity to move ahead in whatever your business is. I forget who said that. I think it was Abraham Lincoln. I just said chaos is a ladder. Yeah. Wait, was that a joke? No, uh, you're the wise man, I guess. Uh, sorry, I no. It's... You know that reminds me of a friend oh, of, of a thing yeah, 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 that my okay. friend Brian Rushwood no, 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 no. said. That uh, chaos tr- is truth. a ladder. Yeah, I, I missed. Well, I missed the chaos really, is a ladder really, part. What really makes sense because is, no, no. Uh, so okay, sorry, no. Right. We're gonna Just clear this chaos up. Chaos is a ladder. The, oh, that's which no. Is Justin. That, okay, look, I'm gonna yeah, clear this I up. Wow. Up. <laughs> I just made that up. That's I like that. Chaos is a ladder. Wow. I am going to clear this up. You should write that down because because the the moment you said that, Bonnie sent me picture of. It's fine. These I, puppies. I, yeah. I, yeah. And that's, I, and I, I think it. what really, I, what really needs to be highlighted I, here is that <laughs> chaos is a ladder. Uh, you know, I've heard that. I, you know, yeah. my friend Brian has said something very <laughs> similar to that. I, no, no, no. Yeah, I, yeah. I got pictures of Brian puppy Weimar honors and we might have yeah. one and it happened at that moment. God, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, that's crazy. I, that's, I, I, it's so I've unlike you to just not hear. <laughs> it's like you're killing me. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I've had, I've been dealing with a mini crisis while we've been recording this, so I understand. I've been like, oh, that's great, guys. Question. Yeah. I've got like, oh, da, 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 da. okay. So furthermore, so mm-hmm. I get it. I get it. As yeah. I was saying, chaos ladder is, is a, ladder. a chaos. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, ah, wow. Well, you got to You might have to um, pay my friend some royalties for saying that. It sounds a little close. Yeah. 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 Uh, congratulations. Now I'm going to forward it to all of you. So you all have to look at these puppies. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that uh, it certainly, there is a tremendous amount of opportunity out there. And I think that that's, I used this example before and, and I, I talk about like, you know, the ending of dumb and dumber when they're walking along and the Hawaiian tropic bus stops and the yeah. girl gets out and says, Hey, we're looking for a couple of towel boys to come with us, <laughs> you know? And you know, the, the punchline is they're like, Oh, well, uh, um, yeah, maybe you'll find some guys that way. And they're like, man, what a couple lucky guys. <laughs> Can it be towel boys on a Hawaiian tropic bus, you know? And like, wait, wait, wait. It's that way, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and, and, and we're, I feel like that's a lot of my life where I'm like, man, really, a really opportunistic person who is you know, a really clever person would go do this thing, would, would go yeah. do this right now. Anyhow, well, let me go watch Lost. Exactly. And yeah. Then, well, I mean, I, I think that there's, there is a tendency that I know a certain personality type has, and I think Brian or uh, Andrew and I specifically kind of fall into it where you feel smart about realizing there's a trend or you feel smart about understanding how a system works. And then you're like, Oh, well, like now I'll point out how this system works or I'll feel good about being able to predict things that happen in the system and not realize like, Oh, wait, maybe you're really good at this and you could take advantage of it. <laughs> like maybe there's something more than, than just like being able to, to, to think through stuff and, and figuring out how to make it a, a productivity engine is, is a huge part of it. And especially now for a lot of people that people that are listening to us are tech forward. They've been, they've been aware of all these tools for a very, very, very long time. Uh, what they are going to find out, is uh that now the world is caught up and instead of saying oh geez zoom i've been on zoom or google hangouts forever yes and so you know them better than anybody else you know these tools better than anybody else you have a tremendous head start for everybody who literally just logged on uh maybe that's a good question uh how we all know that the world never went back to normal after 9-11, um, uh, but certainly big parts of it did go back to normal. Uh, wh- what do we think five years from now will be, quote unquote, back to normal? And what do we never let go of? And I, I think you landed on the first one, uh, the idea of high production uh, video meetings and the efficiency of, of, uh, of this feeling as close to face to face as most of us really want to bother to have. I think for some, okay, like I'm, for me, part of like, I see part of the utility of some of part of me, like, man, I really want to be in a room with a group of people. And because I think that it will be more productive in some ways. And I think it's figuring out when you need that and when you don't need that. I think that, I do think that we're going to be much more integrated into this. You're, you, we forced a lot of teachers to learn how to use tools like this. And a lot of people to sort of jump into stuff. You know, we, we could talk Uh, at length though about how. I would, and and uh, specifically, the other side of that is there's no putting the genie back in the bottle that parents now know that children are only doing 90 minutes of learning per day. Like everything else yeah. is nothing but daycare. And, and, and I don't blame any parent who wants to virtualize their, school, their, their kids' learning experience on an ongoing basis going forward. Yeah. Yeah, I think that... Uh... Uh, Matt Ridley, by the way, on his blog has, you know, five reasons to feel like, I guess, you know, that five hopeful things were regarding COVID and whatnot and talks about how we might be turning a corner on this. And also, I think he talks a little bit kind of the longer term things of like how we're probably going to see reduced amounts of flu, most amounts of cl- the cold and whatnot, because, you know, I watched I watched some restored footage from Japan in like the 1930s and you saw people coming in and off of a train. Some of them had masks, you know, and this yeah. was a thing that was almost a hundred years ago was part of that culture. And when you're over there in these high density cities, that's the norm. 
Here, not so much now. I think you're going to see that now we always do, you know, almost always do that. And I think that'll be the norm. And I think that that's going to be a helpful thing going forward. But I think we are going to sort of weigh those interactions more. So so we said this jokingly last week or the week before, but we t- I, I mentioned something about the idea of like a Kylo Ren mask in a world where we're already protecting our faces for uh, disease pur- purposes, uh, but we also want to get uh, uh, AR benefits uh, on on a visual spectrum, do you, do you think we were, we wear like full face kabuki masks? That, I hope uh, I hope I hope not. I mean, I think that I don't even wearing masks is overall long term isn't healthy. You're reducing the oxygen content. You know, that's one of the problems. Is that like part of the problem is that we have this sort of these we've getting very mixed messaging and stuff. We went from no, don't wear a mask, it doesn't help, which was stupid and a scientific anti science at the time, to now hey, wear a mask. Like oh, wear a mask all the time, and like well, if I'm in a park and nobody's near me, like yeah, just to be safe. And it's like well, that's reduced oxygen input. That's not healthy, you know. And and it's that the the knowing like yeah, no, yeah, I'm gonna go to Dragon Con and walk through the main midway there. Yes, yes, wear a mask, you know, do that. <laughs> Maybe, maybe more better tech for situations when you're close to people, you know, but, uh, you know, I think too, is like, you think about what you could do with, you could build sensors into your watch that could say, Hey, your airflow here, this is, this is, this, this, this air is not good. You know, you're in a supermarket, this part of the supermarket, this air hasn't been circulating, you know, and that might be to yeah, give us the I, most I, amount I, of freedom. I suppose, uh, um, you would have uh, maybe a, a, a two separate parts to the smart mask. Uh, one, something that uh, that gave you a big visual field, but also had an AR overlay related to your your uh, smartphone that's able to regulate, uh, you know, uh, when it's time to change your your face breathing mask, but also uh, uh, you know sampling at all times the uh, number of pathogens or 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 level of risk wherever you are. I don't, I just don't, I, I don't think, I think that's way overkill. I think that right now, you know, I, I think that going forward with, with better monitoring and stuff, you know, we, you, you, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, there may be certain, you know, if you're, if you're a person that has to work in a supermarket checkout line and deal with a bunch of people at once, yeah, it might be better masks and things like this. And ones that could be more auction might be good, but I don't. I don't really want that future where we have to walk around like Darth Vader. You know, no, I'll take I mean, my chances. I, yeah, I think we're yeah we're 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 into a a you know I think the culture would dictate the virus would dictate other viruses would would kind of dictate exactly whether or not we land in a situation like that. Although I do think that it was it would be last resort. Um, but look, you know, I think that uh, if if we're like looking at just where we go in terms of health and safety i i think the idea of hey the way that it is in japan where if you feel sick wear a mask all the time like you know if you're Mm -hmm. in a public place and you feel sick it is a cultural sign of respect that you are wearing a mask because you know you could spread it to others and i think that might be something that 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 keeps uh keeps coming but the rest of it i think we're gonna probably backslide into kind of exactly how we were before now no uh, no where hugs where, and where handshakes we uh, though oh yeah i know hugs and handshakes absolutely hmm. i think i think we'll yeah i mean people do that now to be honest it's like you know uh, uh, that's that's still a thing where i think that that feels in terms of the american psyche more like emergency measures than it does like well these things are out well, I'll, I'll, and I'll, just to Brian, you're masking. That might be a thing for travel. Like if you're on an airplane for a long time, it might be, that might be the thing that you say, Hey, I want to have the special mask because I want the points where you're most likely, you know, cause I know I'm like, oh, I don't want that. But I'm like, Oh, if I had to go international travel and want an airplane and stuff, it might be not a bad idea. Or, or a I convention. Back- that was the other situation yeah. I was thinking of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, I think, I think I'll give you a reason why we might go back to handshakes is that if in every, in every public place, hand sanitizer is right there in the except like right you know i looked back i was buying masks back in january right and then i was having you know getting sanitizer sent from overseas you know just to have enough of it and i went to a party right when this you know like early february mid-february and i meet people and i pull out my sanitizer and start washing my hands and i got looks from people and i'm like listen like 
you know, I'm like, you're laughing at me now, you know, and now everybody gets it. And I think the, I think the upside of us doing handshakes of hand sanitizers there, it may make us more hygienic because if we know handshake sanitize, we're going to be sanitizing our hands a lot more often. So, yeah. so in other words, yeah. the handshake instead becomes a spreading vector, becomes a, a ritual of, of purification uh, every time you meet someone where it's, where it's, it's yeah. uh, like, 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 oh, good. It's a new person I've met. Uh, I'm going to touch them and now we're both going to clean up and now I'm more clean than before we touched each other. I mean, yeah, yeah I, think I think it would be, I, I think when, when, when it comes to our own levels of paranoia and concern with germs and disease and stuff like that. There have always been a strata, but uh, folks who are very conscious about it have often been kind of like, if not looked down upon, like certainly looked at as odd uh, uh, or like possibly even insulting, like Andrew was talking about at a party where it's like, oh, I guess we're gross if you're using hand sanitizer, uh, where I think that's, that I think is gone. Like, like the, now the 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 germaphobe will forever be looked at as like, oh, you know, you want to know what makes more sense now, uh, and and you might see more of that kind of behavior normalized. I think that it, the kind of the norm will be like, don't ask to shake somebody's hand if you don't have sanitizer. You know, like, hey, good to meet you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Maybe. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, you, I, I've actually derived a little bit of joy from describing the over the top ways that I want to show my affection for seeing them like on their way, like, uh, you know, after hanging out or whatever, it's like, uh, like, okay, well, I guess you got to go. And I'm like, I just want you to know, I give you a big old hug and a big old kiss on the cheek, but I can't Bye. <laughs> it's like, but, but it's like Brian. just saying those words somehow makes it less weird. Yeah, you're like, and that's yeah, same as getting one of those e birthday cards. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a, oh, or one great. of those, one of those. Uh, uh, oh, what are they? Uh, the the not Zim Zam. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the ones with the elves and whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, just we had a comment there asking if if uh, using hand sanitizer will contribute to antibiotic resistance, and I looked this up just to be sure. No, because what happens with hand sanitizer is that alcohol just like flat out wipes out the bacteria. You get antibiotic resistance when you have a weakened amount of it. Um, you know, like that's why you take your antibiotics, but you don't finish your course or you start, you know, it's a different sort of process. So in theory, no, you won't have that problem of us because it's sort of saying, well, washing our hands all the time, breed nastier bacteria. Yeah. Although <clears throat> there are bacteria that can survive that. You know, I think we talked about before about a hospital that had a strange spread of something and it was coming from like the sink because oh, they did, weren't they weren't like cleaning the plumbing or something. And it was just this, you know, do, I think yeah. Do, uh, before we wrap up, do, do you think that that we're going to change the way we handle our elderly? Um, because most of the truly tragic cases that we've heard about have been, uh, you know, at retirement homes uh, where we're bundling together all of our most uh, immunosuppressed people in the exact same place. I think that we need to do more things to, you know, monitor our care of people because that is the problem. We sort of push these people off into these facilities. And, and I remember when I was a kid, you know, uh, going to an old folks home, it was the smell, you know, you just, they never smelled clean. It smelled like pee and stuff. And I think that's part of the problem is there's things that may look clean on the surface, but they're not. Yeah. I think, you know, the obviously the more we learned about this virus, the more we realized that literally keeping it out of elder care facilities were, you know, was paramount. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, from this point on, it's actually now that we know that it's actually not the worst place for them because you don't necessarily want. Uh, uh, you know, some of your old folks in multi generational homes or or in situations where they are around people that that you know are frontline workers that may or may not get it or are reckless, and that's where now you're seeing a lot of deaths. Uh, you know, we just had a big spike out here in East Oakland, and a lot of it was just multi generational homes and and people getting it and and not having the uh, the ability to fight it off. Yeah. Uh, and I do want to uh, just a comment because it is a boring point is that somebody points out that alcohol doesn't kill everything. That's true. And it's true. It's, neither does soap and water. 
you know, there, there is, you know, we, you know, what is it? Radionicus, you know, we find bacteria inside of uh, nuclear power plants. We find stuff that's extremely resistant to stuff and even being broken down by soap and stuff. I'm like, yeah, there are, there are, we 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 found uh, an examples of two bacteria that were able to like, could survive in space and stuff. And, and we found them inside of clean rooms, the most clean environments in the world. So you're going to get strains and stuff, but the idea is that most of the stuff that we're pr primarily concerned with that affect the human immune system, you know, seem to be, you know, pretty, that seems to be pretty effective, but it's, 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 it's science is a moving target, you know, science is a thing where you say, is this better, you know, better or not. So, yeah, uh, scary. It's all scary. Germs, germs are actually our friends for the most part, if you think about it, you know, the mostly. gut bacteria and all that. So <laughs> yeah, mostly. Well, that's the other side. If you look at like our stomach is like, you know, how much if we didn't have, you know, gut bacteria, whatever, you know, we would like die of malnutrition. So that's the other part of it is that that delicate balance, if you will. Indeed. A circle of life. It's like a ladder <laughs> out yeah. of chaos. Yes. Chaos is a Weimaraner. <laughs> no, but you saw those pictures though, right? They look pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I know. Just put those suckers yeah. in the dryer for half an hour and they'll be nice. <laughs> they'll and they'll smooth out real okay. nice. Uh, hey, so <laughs> oh, uh, also, wait, wait, real, real quick changing topics. Um, Andrew, did you see the pictures of the Weimaraners? Wait, like, what? I just want to. Yeah, I just want to see. Just changing topics, kill new me. topic. Did you, you see a picture me. of the Weimaraner? Yes. All right, all right, we can change the topic again. Yeah. Brian, did you see the picture of the Weimaraner? Uh, yes. Because uh, okay. I, I, I hey, am throw, reading. Throw them in the, throw them in the dryer. Kindly hey. Inquisitors, <laughs> read by Pendulet, <laughs> is my pick. It's on Audible. Uh, I think it's like a, a 40th anniversary edition or something. It was written in the early 90s, and it uh, makes the case that um, uh, uh, for 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 nasty political discourse. Uh, what we want to believe is that uh, everybody has the right to not have their feelings hurt. Uh, and uh, this book is all about how uh, humanity is better off when we argue ve vehemently against and for and with each other. Yeah, that whole not having my feelings hurt kind of thing. I think about like the opinions I have now and what was shaped by my friends had they had a higher regard for my feelings, I think I would have had some of the same stupid ideas I had when I was 15. Yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, written by uh, Jonathan Rausch, uh, read by uh, Pendulette. Um, man, I, I, I would have loved it if it was written by, or if it was read by Jonathan Rausch, but I guess there was no audio book because it, came out in the early 90s uh but uh but uh you can find some podcast appearances from jonathan roush uh it seems like a real smart cat and uh uh it's you know the marketplace of ideas could be nasty it could be fitful it could be gnarly all around but uh but but uh, uh damned if it isn't you know a literal version of evolution in idea form and uh, i'm enjoying that book excellent Anybody else? Uh, Game of Thrones. A uh, lot of great quotable lines. No, fuck you. My, 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 my new pick is Weimar Honors. Weimar yeah. Honors. They're very wrinkly <laughs> and they're cute. And, and, and I saw a picture of some. There we go. Just, uh, uh, you know, it ends. Uh, it ends after season five. We only made five seasons. So uh, just watch five seasons of Game of Thrones and then just kind of uh just throw it one in the trash. Just, just wonder wonder what might have happened afterwards right you're such own an amazing ending. whatever yeah, yeah whatever you do don't actually watch anything whatever more. whatever you whatever you want <laughs> um I no what they were doing is they were gonna let george r martin write books to be the sequels to what happened oh my sure, god that's good yeah. because they stopped yeah. making them yeah. after season five they ah that'd yeah. be great yeah uh, yeah. I got a I got a pick. Um, I I got I got a, I got a Siri ball the other day, and one of the most interesting things that I've been using the home the Home Pod um, is been just asking it to give me the news, and what it plays is uh, NPR News Now, which I did not know about, um, but it seems very cool. It is an it's it's an it's a pod it's like a five minute podcast that they update every hour of every day. Uh, and it's got news. I, I would love to know how they do it. You can tell it's modular in a certain way. Um, but I, I think that's pretty cool. And it's it's a, a neat way to kind of get 
some of the day's headlines. I, I, I would a, suspect that they're just plugging into, and this is pure speculation on my part, but but I know that you know NPR you know releases a new version of the news five minutes long every hour all day long, so they probably have some kind of you know, uh, plug in process, uh, on yeah. there. And then you just get the latest version. I, and I, and I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, uh, at the last job that I had where we were making a news program by the time that I had left there, instead of re- rent, rolling out a new rendering out a new news file every week, it would be, we would make packages and they would put it in the machine and then it would just play it. So yeah, it would not surprise me, especially given how, you know, compact these reports are, um, that, uh, that they have an, a way to process, but I would love to, I would love to know if anybody has has any knows how they do it. I'd love to know more. But uh, yeah. and it seems like a good news program. Uh, NPR News Now. Hey Siri, what's in the news? Apple computers is at the highest satisfaction rate ever today. <laughs> uh, people around the world are thrilled with Apple's. Apple's <laughs> profitability is up fifty percent. It, it it we we go now to to George Washington. <laughs> Apples I, are great. <laughs> and I believe chaos is a ladder. <laughs> and why marauders are very wrinkly. Throw it in the dryer. Okay. Uh, NPR News now. Screw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, did you? <laughs> oh, my God. You literally, I literally triggered that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I want to like, like, you know, fast, like time travel myself from 20 years ago and like have, have all these smart assistants hidden around the house, <laughs> you know, and then like, I have. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Ugh. It's it's yeah. We just summon them like demons. <laughs> you know. Uh my pick is going to be uh I, you know, I picked this before, but I'm gonna pick it again because it just they just announced they're gonna do an, a live action prequel series for it. Every now and then there there's been a couple of shows that just delighted me, like like you know, like the boys was one where I'm like, wait, this is way better than I thought, really enjoyed it. And my other like the series that I liked better than a certain series on Disney Plus, which I really liked, but I actually thought this series was better, was The Witcher. Wow. Oh, yeah. Witcher. 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 Uh, anybody with me on that? I mean, I haven't seen I, it, but uh, oh. I do know that Bryce already had it pulled up before you said it. Because so. I, I knew about the spinoff. That was in the news today. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I watched the first episode, and I thought it was all right. Um, yeah. But I... I uh, it's still on my list behind like four other things oh, to get back dude, to. Oh, dude, no, you got to. That's a bit of a slow burn. Like Witcher to me was like I loved it at first for kind of it's like no, we're gonna do like even borderline like schlocky kind of like fantasy. Like we're going full on. Everyone's magic and there's spells and it's like a bunch of just like if you like a bunch of fantasy stuff and monsters thrown at the wall then here that is and then about i think it's like four episodes in you kind of realize like oh all this like throw it in a blender fantasy stuff was actually fairly deliberate and it's kind of like coming together and it's it's always so much fun when you fall in love with the show for being fun and then you realize it's really smart um because it doesn't have to wear it on its sleeve uh or like unnecessarily sort of like uh uh like create these like contrived scenes and have actors look like really confused in the camera or hold things back from you the witcher is here to feed it is feeding you with something and then eventually you realize that oh they're also a dietitian uh yeah. I, I i would put uh rick and morty in that kind of category it took it took a good four or five episodes of rick and morty before i realized that Oh wait, they're they're really putting effort into making all of this smart, consistent, and and uh, persistent in the world. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I thought it, I enjoyed it thoroughly, and I'm picking it again because I'm like, go check it. It was one of those delights. Like uh, Carnival Row was another one on Amazon Prime, which I thought was delightful. But Witcher, I really, you just because you you there the people who went made it all the way through Witcher and go yeah, and people will go oh try it out so. Cool. Yeah, you got you got to get in. It's like the episode like four was where I was like four or five. I can't remember which one it is, but that was where I was like, oh, like 
this isn't like I'm not just here for like you know some some uh, sword and you know shield you know on a quest. Let's have a million different characters. It's like, oh, got it. Okay, this is cool. Yeah, hmm. yeah, pretty cool. So, there you go. It's been after as a ladder. <laughs> They're really wrinkly. They look so cute. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's a good point, Brian. I also, uh, separate from that, thought that they were very wrinkly and, and really cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. All right. So well, happy hour in uh, uh, 45. About 45 yeah, minutes. Yep, yep. Then we'll okay. have uh, uh, I'm a, Cord uh, Killers. I think, I think with... the only thing okay. I'm lacking on Cord Killers is uh, the second episode of Warrior Nun. So I'll, I'll start right. checking that out. Okay. Uh, Peace yeah. out. Uh, thank cool. you, everybody. That will be, be happy hour. What's up, Miner? Oh, I'm going. Bye. Oh, okay. Uh, Cord Killer's coming up. Ayaz Akhtar is back on the show. Love having Ayaz on the show. Uh, Night Attack tomorrow. And yeah, more. So, everybody, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you another time. Love you. Love you.